Well, look what we got here. We got a little bit of inside information. I think this is between Sony, PlayStation, and Capcom. I don't know if this is just for Resident Evil 8 Village or all upcoming Capcom games. Um, but I assume this was happening already between, like, Xbox is doing it, Nintendo's doing it, Sony's doing it. I know they're, I think they're still trying to verify this on Twitter, but yeah, I assume this is happening. <laughs> I assume this has been happening for decades. Um, and especially Sony, everyone wants Sony to buy, buy something, please buy something. And this is the type of deals they're going to make with their money. They're going to go to Capcom and go, Hey, um, we're going to market your games and you're not going to make the games better for any other platform or give them any other type of benefit. So this looks like a contract between Capcom and Sony. Let's go ahead and read this clause here, because this is the one that's being tossed around. Um, so feature content and technical parity. During the term and for seven years thereafter, publisher will ensure each version of the game available on PlayStation platforms maintains content, feature, and technical parity uh, subject to material platform limitations with any equivalent version of the game or DLC released on any other competitive platform or PC mobile platform. Publisher will not release the game or any DLC on any competitive platforms or PC mobile platform on an exclusive basis or to offer any additional content or any additional features or benefits to end users of the game on any competitive platform or PC mobile platform on an exclusive basis. All right, so right away, like, Resident Evil 8 Village, you're not going to get, like, an additional skin or anything on an Xbox, um, Nintendo, or PC that isn't on PlayStation. So, PlayStation owners, you don't have to worry about missing out on anything there. Um, but also performance. Now, if you take a trip back in time, I think it was about a, yeah, about a year ago, Resident Evil 3 remake came out and if you remember that game ran well on ps4 pro but on xbox one x ran like ass <laughs> and they actually went ahead and updated it so i mean it's been like this forever capcom the place to play those games are playstation and sony they probably saw a bethesda deal and went we need to do something and they went to <laughs> capcom and made this is probably the best deal that they can make without buying them outright. And I think they probably did the same with Square Enix. They went to them and said, hey, what can we do? We can buy Final Fantasy 16 exclusivity. Um, but yeah, it kind of sucks. And I'm seeing Sony guys kind of run with that chart between the PS5 and Series X and how the demo ran on the PS5. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you're wondering why the game probably is going to run the same, Maybe even worse on the Series X, Resident Evil 8 Village. This is why. <laughs> this is why I hate this console nonsense. It's like, can we just get, like, let the developer make the game. And I'm pretty sure the developer would look at the Series X and go, oh, we got some more horsepower here. We can make it run at 4K, native 4K 60, and PS5 only 1800p 60. I'm being rude. I know it runs at 4K60. I played the demo. Like, I know it's 4K60, but that looked like a very <laughs> low quality, low to medium setting 60 or 4K60. Because I was like, this kind of looks ass. <laughs> um, but yeah, subject to material platform limitations here. Um,. So maybe that does mean that, like, hey, since maybe the PS5 is limited, that they are allowed to on PC, maybe unlock the frame rate, maybe allow up to 8K or something like that. Because <laughs> you're not putting Resident Evil 8 Village on PC at 4K60. That ain't going to fly. The frame rate needs to be higher than that, so... You know, this, to me, it isn't news. It's just interesting to see the language 
that is between Sony and Capcom. And yeah, does it suck? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too much into Resident Evil. Uh, Monster Hunter, I try to get into, I just can't. Though when Dragon's Dogma comes out, Dragon's Dogma 2, all right, now I'll, because I'm really loving my Series X and I'd much rather play it there. Um, yeah, very interesting. Now I'd love to see how much Sony pays for this stuff. And it's kind of, I don't know, you're just seeing, like we see Sony be very conservative here. It's not like they're going out and trying something new. Um, like last generation when they went and got the Call of Duty, they snatched that from Microsoft. Here, that's just, it's kind of like Insomniac. People into, <laughs> even the employees at Insomniac assumed that they were Sony employees. They were owned by Sony. <laughs> so here it's like, oh, okay, so Sony's just really locking up what people already consider theirs. And it's the same thing with uh, Square Enix and Final Fantasy 16. It's kind of like, yeah, do you really, like, do you need an exclusivity deal? I feel like most people would have bought it and played it on PlayStation 5 anyways. <laughs> um, just interesting stuff. Tell me what you think. Is this fair? Should Microsoft retaliate? I think Microsoft should retaliate by just buying Square Enix. Buy Square Enix and take away exclusivity from <laughs> Final Fantasy sixteen. Um, or hell, go and snatch, uh, <laughs> what was it? What's the game? Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. Be like, nah, you're pulling this shit, Sony. We're going to go ahead and take back those exclusives from you. Sorry. I'd love it. I'd love to see him be petty. I'd love to see it. Anyways, I will talk to you later. Later.